Man United have just beaten our noisy neighbors 2-1 to lift the FA Cup trophy. Today isn't a special day just because we've won a trophy. Because we need to put this accomplishment into perspective. We have just beaten the best team in the world who are coming off the back of a historic treble winning season and the fourth Premier League title in a row this season. We've also won the FA Cup for the first time in eight years since 2016 and only the third time since the turn of the century. This is also our 13th FA Cup win, which is now just one behind the record holders, Arsenal, who have 14. But the biggest accomplishment I want to celebrate today is the fact that Eric Ten Hag is the first manager since Sir Alex to win trophies in back-to-back -back seasons at United. Sir Alex won the UCL in the Premier League in 07-08 and then won the league in, again in 08-09. And now Ten Hag has done the same thing with the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. And you might be thinking, oh, that's not the same thing. Carabao Cup and FA Cup are crap compared to the league and Champions League. And you would be right. But look at the state of our club since Sir Alex has left. There have been much more accomplished managers that haven't been able to do what Ten Hag has done in his first two seasons. Mourinho won two trophies in his first season but couldn't really win anything after that. Van Hal won the FA Cup in his last season and Ali got to one UEL final and he lost. It is not a joke to win two trophies in two years. Just ask any Tottenham fan and they'll confirm it for you. For Ten Hag to take over our worst Premier League side of all time and take them to third place and a trophy in his first season, for him to deal with 60 plus individual injuries in his second season and still find a way to win the FA Cup is nothing short of a miracle. And despite all of this, the rumors are that Eric Ten Hag is set to be sacked by Ineos anytime in the near future. So as crazy and unfair as that might sound, we have to take that rumor seriously because it has been coming from several credible outlets. And I have a very, very clear explanation for why Ineos wants to make this move. And believe it or not, it does not have anything to do with United's style of play or the fact that they've been playing crap football this season. It also doesn't have anything to do with us finishing in eighth place and outside of the Champions League spots. And it doesn't have anything to do with Rashford or Sancho or Maguire or any type of dressing room unrest. So if you're watching this now or at some point in the future and Ten Hag has already been sacked, I would still recommend you keep watching because the facts that I'm gonna talk about here will still be relevant whether you watch it now or in the future. Let's get into it. I wanna take you guys back to the 2021-2022 season. We had just come off the long and impending sacking of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which meant the first half of the season was littered with poor performances and poor results. Then we hired Ralph Ranick, who was supposed to be our savior and supposed to be part of the structure moving forward, but the players gave up on him immediately, which led to the second half of the season being littered with poor performances and results and the start of Ronaldo's throwing his toys out the pram. So we were, as a club, in the worst place we'd ever been in since the start of the Premier League back in 1992. At that time, we were looking for a savior to come to the club and start a project that took us back to our glory days. But we weren't looking for another established manager who was past it like your Van Gaal or Mourinho, or another unproven manager that understood the DNA of the club like Ollie did. We were looking for a manager who has achieved success in Europe with limited resources and most importantly, a manager that has done so by blooding the youth through to the first team and consistently improving them. And that's when Eric Ten Hag came into the picture with his success at Ajax with three Eredivisie titles, two Dutch Cup wins, and that infamous semi-final run in the 18-19 Champions League season. When he joined United, John Murtaugh and Richard Arnold were basically on their knees to make United great again. They were willing to do pretty much anything in their power to get Eric Ten Hag and equip him with the right tools to get the job done. And in that summer, we tried and failed to do exactly that. We spent more than two months trying to poach Frankie de Jong, and when that didn't work, we ended up spending 60 million pounds on Casemiro. Ten Hag wanted Anthony and Licha from day one, but we dilly-dallied on both deals and ended up 
overspending by about 50 million pounds combined on both of them. Then there were other players like Gakpo, Felix, Timber, Caicedo, Pulisic, Depay, and Sergino Dest that Ten Hag actually wanted, but we got none of them over the line. So in my humble opinion, it's fair to say that Ten Hag was doomed to fail before even managing a single game at United. Because the leeches in the media like Jamie Carragher, Alan Shearer, and everybody else would always have the, oh, he spent 400 million and achieved nothing argument in their back pocket. And ever since then, it has been very easy for the media to just ignore all the successes and blame all the failures on Eric Ten Hag. Despite, despite them knowing very well that Ten Hag has nothing to do with us overspending on all those players. He had a say on which players he wanted, but executing the transfer negotiations was never his purview. That was something that Richard Arnold and John Murtaugh handled for the club. So when you take all of this context into consideration and think about why Ineos want to sack Ten Hag, the picture becomes crystal clear. Rob Dawson over at ESPN published an article on January 2nd, 2024, almost six weeks before the 25% investment from Ineos was officially ratified by the United Board of Directors. Here, he talks about Ten Hag's wishes to retain his influence in Man United's recruitment decisions once the Ineos investment is ratified by the board. Dawson also confirms that the Dutchman has held a veto on all transfers since arriving as manager in 2022 and wants to continue having a major say on which players come and go at Old Trafford. And the key point here isn't that Ten Hag just wishes to have a say in transfer negotiations. Because according to Dawson, a source has told ESPN the veto is written into Ten Hag's contract and he expects the clause to be honored despite a change in personnel at the top of the football department. And this right here is the key source of conflict that we're dealing with when it comes to Eric Ten Hag and Ineos. The whole message from Sir Jim, since he's shown interest in purchasing a stake in the club, is that he wants to take Man United back to its glory days where we consistently won trophies, prioritized the youth, and we were the biggest club in the world. And if you know anything about Ineos and their sporting interests across football, running, rugby, cycling, sailing, and Formula One, it is that they believe in making change from the top. They believe in setting up a cohesive structure that goes from the top to the bottom of the sporting entity that they manage. So winning shouldn't just be a thing that you do every now and again, but something that is part of your culture something that you are ingrained and set up to do. In fact, here's one sentence from the Ineos website that says everything about their philosophy. Through grit, rigor, and determination, Ineos sport teams lead from the front, taking technology and human performance to the next level, never shying away from a challenge. So it's not surprising that they have recruited a new CEO in Omar Barada from a successful club like Man City, Jean-Claude Blanc from Ineos Sport as the interim chief executive, Roger Bell from Ineos Sport as the new chief financial officer, Jason Wilcox as technical director from Southampton and Man City, Dan Ashworth as the director of football from Newcastle, and of course, Sir Dave Brailsford, who will basically oversee all footballing operations alongside Sir Jim, as he is the director of sport for Ineos. So when Ineos is basically building a whole new Man United, starting with the executives and the backroom staff, the picture becomes very, very clear. They are trying to build a cohesive structure at the club from start to finish. They have a very clear understanding of where the club is now and where they want to be in the next three, five, and 10 years. And everyone from the training staff and the medical teams to the players and the manager need to be 100% bought into that vision. So when Ten Hag says that he wants to have a say in transfers and he wants Ineos to honor the clause that is already in his contract, this, from their perspective, is a very big issue. Because they don't want an independent manager who is going to have their say and keep disagreeing with them. They want a coach who comes in and develops the players according to their long-term vision. Someone who will keep playing the same style of football, 
with or without their preferred transfer targets, someone who will maintain a consistent system from the youth team to the senior team. And when you actually sit back and think about all this, it becomes very clear exactly why we've been linked to the likes of Gareth Southgate and Kieran McKenna. Because Gareth did the exact same thing under a clear long-term structure for Dan Ashworth with the England DNA project, and Kieran McKenna from Ipswich Town, who was also the former United Under-18 manager, will be more than happy to be the yes man that fits into the Ineos vision. So, considering all of this, if and when Eric Ten Hag gets sacked, it won't be because his football hasn't been good enough. It won't be because his man management hasn't been good enough. It won't be because he isn't developing the youth. It will be because he is staying firm on the fact that he wants to have a say in our recruitment under the Ineos vision. And think about that. It's fair enough. He's the guy that took charge of the club when it was on its knees after 10 years of bad recruitment and no success. He managed to win a trophy in his first season and finished third, and he managed to carry United through an injury-riddled second season without his top transfer targets and with two or three of his best players having a really bad season. Oh, and by the way, he just managed to beat the best team in the world to win his second trophy in back-to-back -back seasons. Why shouldn't he demand that Ineos stick to the clause in his contract and work with him to achieve a shared vision over the coming seasons? Who in their right mind would just hand over all the power to Ineos when they actually haven't proven themselves yet? They might do, but they haven't done anything yet. Why shouldn't he have the ability to veto signings that he doesn't think are good enough or don't fit into his philosophy? If it's not clear by now, <laughs> I think it will be a massive mistake to sack Eric Ten Hag. I think we will be going down the Chelsea route of sacking a manager too soon like they did with Thomas Tuchel. Instead of going down the route of Arsenal, who backed a manager like Arteta for a long-term vision despite the lack of success in the first two or three seasons. And listen, objectively speaking, Ten Hag has done more than Arteta did in his first two seasons. Arteta finished eighth twice and won an FA Cup. Ten Hag finished third and eighth got to the FA Cup final two seasons in a row, won one of those finals, and also won a Carabao Cup. So what do you guys think should happen? I mean, I'm curious. I'm glued to my screens. I'm waiting for Fabrizio to, to announce one way or the other whether Ten Hag has gotten sacked or whether he's going to stay with the club. I want to know what your thoughts are. Get in the comments below whether you're watching this post the Ten Hag sack or pre the Ten Hag sack. I want to hear from you guys. And before we leave, I want to give a huge shout out to my brother who's probably watching this right now. I watched last season's FA Cup final with him in Mumbai and we unfortunately ended up losing to City. And even though I haven't been able to watch this year's final with him in person, I know he's enjoying our revenge against those cheating bastards in blue just as much as I am. So here's to United winning many more things and us being able to watch those finals together. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.